Greetings. My name is Loretta Bartz. I'm an occupational therapist with Health Pro Heritage, and I'm joined today um, by with Ruth Miller, a physical therapist. Our family of therapists, wellness, and fitness experts have worked with seniors just like you for more than 20 years. We love what we do, helping to keep people engaged and empowered while also having fun. Our job is to keep you moving and learning every day, even during the quieter times at your community. This is just one video in our series called Healthy Living to Go. Each video is designed to bring fitness, education, and fun to your doorstep. Are you ready to begin? Today's video is on infection control, the best defense against germs. And to start with, we just wanna talk about health and age risk factors um, associated with put, making people more susceptible to flus and other viruses. Um, some of these include adults over the age of 65, people with chronic lung disease such as COPD, people with a diagnosis of diabetes, heart disease such as CHF, kidney disease, persons with weakened immune systems, and a history of stroke. Individuals with any of these risk factors should be vigilant in practicing good hand washing and should avoid being in situations where they're at greater risk to be exposed to germs and viruses. So let's take a closer look at the impact flu or other viruses can have on the ad older adults. For older adults, the flu can be much more than just another illness. It can result in dangerous, even deadly complications that send millions to their doctors, hundreds of thousands to hospitals, and some to an early death. And this is in part because the human immune defenses become weaker with increasing age. Uh, while flu season can vary in, vary in severity, people 65 years and older bear the greatest burden of severe flu-like. Um, disease. It is estimated that between 70 and 80 percent of flu-related deaths have occurred in people over the age of 65 and older. 60 to 70 percent of flu-related hospitalizations have occurred among people in this age group. Um, so as you can see, influenza is often quite serious for people over the age of 65. Along with that, we also um, need to understand that there's a higher prevalence of chronic medical conditions, which we identified, such as CHF and diabetes and stroke, um, that um, in this um, older adult population, which then also places them at um, more greater risk for complications and severe outcomes. So it's really good to understand that among people 50 to 64 years of age, that greater than 70% of them have one or more chronic medical condition, and 50% of them have two or more. Among adults greater than 65 years of age, that percentage even goes higher. 86% have one chronic condition, and 80% of that age population have two or more chronic conditions which again, compounds their risk. So let's look at the pathway for germs. Our hands are one of the main ways we transmit germs and viruses and other microbes. In addition to inhaling airborne germs, touching your hand to contaminated surfaces, and then touching your eyes, nose, or mouth is how the germ or virus most often gets inside you. By utilizing consistent hand washing will help individuals and their communities stay healthy. It helps to reduce the number of people who get sick with diarrhea by 23 to 40%. And people with weakened immune systems, we can even increase or reduce that risk of diarrheal illness by up to 58%. We can reduce respiratory illnesses such as the cold or flu in the general population by 16 to 21%.
So as, as you touch people, surfaces, and objects throughout the day, you accumulate germs on your hands. You can infect yourself with these germs and viruses by touching your eyes, your nose, your mouth, or spreading them to others. Although it's impossible to keep your hands germ-free, washing your hands frequently can limit the transfer of bacteria, viruses, and other microbes. So when should you wash your hands? This table kind of shows before and after scenarios. So before um, you prepare food, care for somebody who's sick with um, a diarrhea or vomiting or respiratory illness, when you're managing a cut or wound, or while you're inserting or removing contacts, it's always good to wash your hand before any of these activities. And for the list on the right, always wash your hands after preparing food, blowing your nose, coughing, sneezing, obviously using the toilet, treating a cut or wound, caring for that sick person, handling any type of garbage, touching an animal, feeding an animal, or their animal waste, or even handling pet food or pet treats, all call for you washing your hands. So prevention is key, and hand washing um, can help prevent illness. Regular hand washing helps to prevent the spread of germs to others. It's quick, it's simple, and it can help us all from getting sick. As they say, hand washing is a win for everyone except the germs. Washing your hands is easy. It's one of the most effective ways to prevent the spread of germs. Um, the friction from scrubbing with soap and water actually can break or does break the virus's protective envelope. And by, by disrupting this coating, the virus can't do its job, which is to allow the virus to merge with other cells and infect them. So as you can see, there is some science behind hand washing. So there's five easy steps of effective hand washing. The first is to wet your hands with clean running water, whether it's warm or cold. You'd want to turn the tap off before you apply the soap. So it's important to use the running water as opposed to water placed in a basin that's been standing because that could have been contaminated through previous use. So clean running water should always be used. And according to the CDC, antibacterial soaps are no more effective in killing disease causing germs than other soap. The second step is lathering your hands by rubbing them together with soap. You must lather the back of your hands between your fingers and under your fingernails. It's important to lather all the areas and you have to scrub because the scrubbing creates friction, which helps lift the dirt, the grease, and the microbes from the skin. Microbes are present on all surfaces of the hand, often in particularly high concentration under the nails. So we must scrub under the nails as well. Step three, the timing of scrubbing your hands. It's important that we scrub our hands for at least 20 seconds. Why? Because evidence suggests that washing your hands for at least 20 seconds removes more germs from your hands than washing for shorter periods of time. So if it's difficult to count up to 20, you, you might lose track, you just think about singing the happy birthday song or humming the happy birthday song twice from beginning to end, and that takes 20 seconds. So if you consider doing that, that will help you wash your hands for the appropriate length of time. After you scrub your hands, you wanna rinse your hands well, again, under clean running water. You should be rinsing the soap away to help minimize skin irritation from the soap. And hands could become recontaminated if you only rinse them in a basin of water as opposed to using the clean running water. And step five, the last step, is to dry your hands with a clean towel or air dry them. It's important to use a dry towel um, to make sure that germ, germs do not transfer. Germs can be transferred more easily to and from wet hands. 
So we should dry our hands. We do have a handout that's available after this video that from uh, the CDC called Stop Germs and Wash Your Hands. The use of hand sanitizers. People are using hand sanitizers more and more these days. But washing your hands with soap and water is still the best way to get rid of germs in most situations. But if soap and water are not available, you can use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer that contains at least 60% of alcohol. And you can tell if the sanitizer contains at least 60% of alcohol by looking at the product label. So you want to apply the gel product of the hand sanitizer to the palm of one hand. And then you want to rub your hands together. And you want to rub the gel over all surfaces of your hands and fingers until your hands are dry. And this should also take about 20 seconds. So again, using that, birth, using that birthday song will help you uh, rub your hands for the correct amount of time. Again, we want to use the 20 seconds to make sure that we're getting all the areas and rubbing and sanitizing all the areas. We do have a hand washing and hand sanitizer use handout, but as well, we want to share with you this video from uh, YouTube. So this video shows you how to wash your hands and they're using black ink to show you where the soap has lathered and where you're going to scrub that soap and how you need to lather and scrub that, that soap through all the crevices between your fingers. At your fingernails, you want to make sure to rub your hands together, create friction to remove the germs. And you want to get that soap throughout the entire hands. As you could see, the black ink here is starting to show over the front and the back sides of the hands in between your fingers and along the fingernails. That shows that you've completed that. So as we move on, there are additional steps to, for you to protect yourself. And some of that includes avoiding touching your eyes, your nose, and your mouth with unwashed hands. You also wanna stay at home if you're sick, except to get medical care. You wanna cover your mouth and nose with a tissue when you cough or sneeze or use the inside of your elbow instead of using your hand. You want to throw any used tissues directly in the trash and then immediately wash your hands with soap and water for at least the 20 seconds as we described earlier. And again, if soap and water are not readily available, you can clean your hands with the hand sanitizer that contains at least 60% alcohol. If you are sick, you should limit your exposure to others to limit the spread of the illness. So you should do your best to cover your coughs and your sneezes. And for those who are caring for you, should always practice good infection control practices like hand washing. If you're not sick, you really do not need to wear a face mask unless you're caring for someone who is at high risk. Face masks may be and are in short supply and they should be saved for healthcare providers. So some additional things that you can do to disinfect and clean other areas. So we're frequently touching other surfaces daily. We wanna to remember to clean and disinfect these surfaces. And some of these surfaces include tables, doorknobs, light switches, countertops, handles, desks. Our phones and our cell phones, we're constantly touching our cell phones. So we should remember to clean and disinfect that as well as continue to practice good hand washing. Continue to clean keyboards and iPads and of course your toilets, faucets and sink. And again, we also have a handout called Keeping Germs at Bay that you can review. There are other products that you can use that can help destroy germs and viruses. Bleach is one product that the CDC recommends that we can use in a diluted solution. 
We'd want to wear gloves while using the bleach and never mix it with anything except for water. And again, we should be diluting the bleach with water. The only exception to diluting bleach with water is when you're using the bleach with laundry detergent, and then we only use a very small portion. You can also use isopropyl alcohol. Alcohol solutions with at least, with it, with at least 70% alcohol are effective against germs and viruses, but you don't want to dilute the alcohol solution. And it's generally safe to use on all surfaces, but it, does, it can discolor some plastics. Hydrogen peroxide, according to the CDC, is effective in deactivating rhinovirus, which is the virus that causes the common cold, which is one of the most difficult viruses to destroy. So if you want to use hydrogen peroxide, you'd want to pour it undiluted into a spray bottle and spray it onto a surface to be cleaned. But you should let it sit on the surface for several minutes because it does need quite a few minutes of exposure, at least six to eight minutes of exposure, to uh, clean the germs and the virus. Some products that are advised not to use. Vodka, even though there are widely circulated recipes on the internet to use vodka, it does not contain enough ethyl alcohol. It only contains about 40% compared to the 70% required to kill most germs. Another product is distilled white vinegar. Some of these recommendations are also popular online, but there is no evidence that they are effective against killing germs or virus. So the best way that we can help protect ourselves is keeping our hands clean. It's the, one, it's the most important step that we could take in avoid getting sick and spreading our germs to others. Many diseases and conditions are spread by not washing our hands with soap and clean running water. So we must keep calm and wash your hands. So with some simple lifestyle changes and planning, we can all help do our part in lowering the risk for illness. And remember, life is better with clean hands. We're so glad you took advantage of today's Healthy Living on the Go program. Remember that we do have some handouts available that you can view. And on behalf of Health Pro Heritage, I'm happy I'm already looking forward to the next time you tune in.